Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. I recently hiked the art lobe for the second time now. So today I just wanted to share my five pieces of advice for hiking the art lobe trail. And this is just what has worked for me, what I've learned over these last two uh, trip experiences going both northbound almost two years ago and then southbound this year. And this isn't the right or wrong way to do things, just my own opinion and experience and all of that. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Now I did do a guide video following my northbound trip, like I said, almost two years ago. Some of the info is out of date, so I will be doing a more up-to-date itinerary on my support page in which I'll share specific details about water sources, campsites, and a variety of different route options you could take as far as how many miles you do a day, how many days to spend. And if you are interested in it, the details will be in the description. But let's go ahead and get into the five pieces of advice for hiking the Art Lobe Trail. The first would be familiarizing yourself with the trail. And this is something I recommended for the foothills as well, and something that I did leading up to that hike. So rather than your first experience with the Art Lobe being hiking it all the way through, do some day hikes along it. Or if that's not an option, you're like me, you live pretty far away, you can't just jump in the car and visit for the day, do an overnight or even multi-day backpacking trip over the weekend doing a section of it at a time, just to familiarize yourself with it. This is something I did not do leading up to my northbound trip, and I really wish I had. So even though I had already hiked the whole trail and knew what was out there, leading up to the decision to hike it again southbound in the fall, I spent spring and summer refamiliarizing myself with it and doing overnight backpacking trips, doing multi-day trips like the Pisgah Circuit that uh, involved the Art Lobe in addition to a number of other trails in Pisgah. So hiking it in bite-sized pieces at a time before taking on the whole thing. And something I recommended for the Foothills Trail and also would recommend for this trail would be to check out those sections that you're most worried about. I know for myself, Shining Rock is an area that seemed really intimidating and as well as the Black Balsam area used to really intimidate me because of past negative experiences with it and failed trips and all of that. But once I spent more time out there and really got to know the area, I built up the confidence to where it didn't seem as intimidating anymore. I knew what I was up against, so to speak. And so getting out there on the southbound trip, I didn't feel like I had this uh, huge obstacle against me going through Shining Rock and the Black Balsam area. I felt pretty much at home, like I knew what I was doing and, and where I was going. So taking those overnight trips and multi-day trips on and around the art lobe really did help leading up to my southbound trip. The second piece of advice or thing I've learned from all the experiences on this trail is to be prepared to go off trail for water. By off trail, I do not mean like off of an established trail. I mean off of the main trail, the Art Lobe, onto the connecting trails within the Pisgah National Forest trail system. One of the main things this trail is notorious for is scarce water and water sources not really being prevalent or reliable along the trail itself but being willing to go off of the art lobe onto other trails that are close by within a quarter to a mile, that was really helpful on this southbound trip. One of many reasons I chose to do that this time around rather than carrying large quantities of water is I just can't do that anymore. So if my pack weight is over 25 pounds, I've mentioned this in my backpack review for the levity, as well as a couple other videos, but essentially if I'm carrying too much weight, I end up having knee pain, joint pain, and pretty much injuries. To prevent that, I've got to keep my pack weight down 
and on this trail that meant exhausting all of my options as far as the water sources in the surrounding area and not carrying too much. So along this trail, with the exception of getting into camp, that's a different story. I didn't carry more than a liter and a half to two liters at a time. Like I mentioned, I exhausted every option uh, along the way as far as water sources within a quarter to a mile off trail. And I'm very glad that I did because if I was making like four liter water carries, I would have ended up with an injury and that just would have been a really bad situation. And my northbound hike, I went off of all of the advice to do these very long, heavy water carries and ended up with some pretty bad knee problems rather than researching what my options were in the area, what nearby trail junctions there could be water down. And like I mentioned, I'll be sharing that itinerary on my support page with details as far as what water sources I utilized and all of that information. I'd also like to mention I did my southbound trip in late fall in semi-drought conditions and so even though I went off trail for water uh, it still took quite a long time. Some of those sources were definitely not flowing very well. The water was there but it took some time to fill up my water bladder and filter it and all of that. So there was kind of a time penalty as well as an extra mileage penalty for choosing to do that. But again, that was the trade-off for having super long water carries and all this extra weight that in my own situation usually ends up in injury. So for the third item, we're going to talk northbound or southbound. You're probably going to expect me to tell you to definitely go northbound or definitely go southbound, but I would say it just depends. They say southbound is easier. In my opinion, after doing the trail in both directions, I would say not really. Both directions are pretty difficult, but for different reasons. And which way you go just depends on what you're looking for and how you want to begin and end your journey. So if you want to begin on flat gravel trail and sort of work up to the climbs of Chestnut Mountain, Ridge Mountain, and ultimately Pilot Mountain, then northbound might be for you. If that's how you want to end with uh, your last sort of memory of the trail being on flat ground and gravel going towards the ending trailhead, then maybe southbound is for you. If you want to end on the views of Black Balsam and even have the option to summit Cold Mountain and the overlook up there, then maybe northbound is for you. If you want to get the challenge of Shining Rock Wilderness and the Narrows out of the way immediately, then maybe southbound is for you. It really just depends on what you're looking for and how you would like to begin and end your trip. So as far as northbound, southbound, wish I could tell you like this way is better or that way is better, but it really just depends on the hiker. Fourth piece of advice or thing that I've learned from my experiences is to have a flexible plan. Hopefully this makes sense, but my kind of plan approach was not this super rigid, I must meet exactly this many miles and camp in this exact spot. It was more like, I want to complete between this number and that number of miles. And I had sort of a zone for myself. I can write out a super rigid plan for my trip, but what I've learned is when it comes to the day of the trip or during the trip, there's no telling how I'm going to feel. I can say I want to complete 12 miles this day and camp in this exact spot, but the thing is, I may or may not have the energy to get there at the end of the day. For all I know, I might get there and have tons more energy and have two and a half, three, four more miles in me. So what I did for this trip was I wrote sort of a plan A, B, C. And the beautiful thing about this trail and Pisgah is there's no assigned permit system, so your plan can be super fluid. And that's something I made sure to take advantage of with this trip. Rather than stressing myself out and risking injury by pushing myself too far to try and make 
you know, 12 miles, 13 miles, whatever the goal is, having a sort of wider goal or wider range with where I'm okay with stopping for the day uh, if I need to and just taking my time with the trail. When I did the northbound trip, I wanted to get this thing over with in two days, one night, and I wound up pulling 15 miles one day, 16 miles the next day, and I was not in great shape after. If I had camped a second night, I probably would have had a way better time, and taking three days, two nights to do this trail the second time around, I'm so glad I did it that way. That's just what works for me. Uh, it may not work for you. Maybe you want to take four or five days, but just having a plan that is not overly structured and overly rigid to the point that uh, it's stressful and you push yourself further than you need to. That's kind of the advice. All right, the last piece of advice for hiking the Art Lobe Trail is to take all advice, even mine, with a grain of salt. The conclusion I've come to, and this is kind of the moral of the story for the hike video, is one of the reasons this trail is so difficult is because you're carrying everyone else's baggage. Chances are, if you are planning to hike this trail, you've already spent countless hours pouring over every blog and trip report and trip video that's out there just to get an idea of what you're up against. And that is a great thing. There is nothing wrong with planning and being prepared and knowing what's out there. But when you take to heart all of just the horror stories and terrible things that have happened to other people on their trip, that can really psych you out. And like I mentioned in the trip video, sabotage your own experience before it's even happened. I know that was the case for me. I was so scared, like sick to my stomach the night before doing my northbound hike because I was thinking about and playing through in my head all of the terrible things I'd read and heard from other people, but myself in that situation, like scared that their nightmare situation would become my own experience rather than just letting my own trip play out and, you know, rolling with the punches, dealing with the challenges as they come. I was expecting trouble around every turn and it ended up being a pretty rough trip. This time around, I tried to go in with a clean slate sort of attitude. This trail is kind of an example of the self-fulfilling prophecy. So the prophecy is that you, just like all other hikers before you, are going to have a very difficult and challenging trip. So that kind of influences your behavior on the actual trip, which then leads to the outcome that you were expecting and then just affirms the prophecy that you and all hikers after and before you will have a bad time, if that makes sense. And so kind of being able to separate out Yes, there is a problem of water being scarce. Yes, there are sections and junctions that are not marked well. Yes, the terrain is difficult, but not allowing that to uh, emotionally affect you. Take the facts, have a plan in place of if you encounter this, how you will deal with it, but then not harp on it and worry and let it get you all anxious and upset and make you think that your trip's gonna be bad before you even go through with it. So taking all of that advice with a grain of salt is very important. I know I said five pieces of advice, but before I let you go, I'm gonna throw in a bonus piece of advice here, and that is to have fun. I know, that is so simple and so obvious, but that attitude shift made such a difference for me. With my northbound hike, I went into it with the attitude of taking on a challenge, and that did not go very well. With the southbound trip, I decided to go into it instead with the attitude of having fun. So anytime that I would reach an obstacle and, you know, sort of hit a wall and things were getting tough, I would stop and remind myself, I'm here to have fun. That was kind of the motto of the trip. Why am I here? Not to take on a challenge, not to, you know, test myself, but to have a good time and have fun. And that, like I said, made a world of difference. This was such a positive experience by comparison. So just to summarize, number one piece of advice would be to familiarize yourself with the trail. 
Two, going onto connecting trails for water helped me a lot. I didn't have to carry nearly as much along those stretches between the next water source directly on the trail. Three, north or southbound, it just depends. It depends on the hiker, what you're looking for. Number four, having a flexible plan for me, that really helped out in terms of not being stressed and pushing myself too hard to make the miles and make it to the next camp. Just knowing in general where I wanted to end and having sort of that zone to work within. Number five, taking that advice with a grain of salt. Don't take all the bad things that people try to tell you about and scare you about to heart. Yes, learn the facts, know what you're up against, but definitely don't let what other people have to say psych you out and sort of sabotage your trip before it happens. And then I know I said five pieces, but the last piece of advice, having fun, is so important. Backpacking should be fun. Not every moment of it needs to be about embracing the suck and put your nose down and grind. Just having fun is super important. All right, it's starting to get dark, so I'll let you go. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your night, and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Back to a place where I could begin Maybe you just don't go hiking. No, that's not an option.